This segment is all about selling your business in today's post-pandemic economy. Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial, and this segment's brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books published to educate consumers, grow their businesses and practices, and to leave a legacy. Joining me on this segment is Brad Ruth. He's the founder of Great Lakes Business Alliance. Brad, welcome to the program. Hello, uh, um. Hey, Mark, I appreciate you having me on, on, on your program. Brad, tell us a little bit about your work and specifically tell us who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping. So I look with, uh, I work with all different types of business owners. I haven't, haven't really settled into a, a, you know, a sure niche, but I do work a lot with, uh, it's restaurant owners. I've sold landscaping companies, um, manufacturing companies, and it's to, it's distribution company. So it's been a, a, a variety of different businesses and it's just about finding businesses that are making money and that the owners are running it with the end in mind, which can be very challenging right now because a lot of business owners are trying to reduce the tax burden, uh, but it's not making it a, a very sellable business. I know business owners are really great at starting and growing their business growth, growth, growth every day. I don't know how much, how many of them really think about the end in mind, but when it comes to selling a business, do, do they, did they given it much thought or do they even know where to start? Many business owners don't, they should be talking with, with someone like myself or an exit planner. And um, if they're thinking about it within, you know, the next three to five years, it makes a lot of sense to start, start changing the way you're running your business to show more profitability and write off less, less, less things like, you know, auto expenses and, and expenses for kids. A lot of things that business owners run through, it's okay if it's trackable items, but if you're taking cash out of your business, you got to make sure that you're, you are putting all the revenue in the business and showing it in the bank accounts. And so we can show it to the IRS because that's what it's based on is your tax returns. So I encourage business owners to really start changing the way they run their business. And I can, I can meet with them and kind of show them, what they're doing now and what we can do to change that and to improve their, their, their overall value of their business. One of the ideas of this series is really to shed light on the process of selling a business. And you brought up a, a great point. You mentioned, you know, getting it prepared maybe a few years in advance. Do business owners know that? Or uh, when you hear from them, are a lot of them like behind the eight ball? Uh, usually they're behind the eight ball. I, I'd say it's only about 20% of the time that they're, that they're kind of teed up and ready to go. They typically don't have clean financials. Uh, they have not, they just all of a sudden, hey, I think I'm, I want to sell. They've burned out. You should be really planning and thinking about that a couple of years in advance. And if not, I work with them to kind of walk through the process. I've got, you know, probably 100 businesses in the funnel right now that are in various stages of, of, of preparing to sell because they just they just weren't doing what they needed to do and they didn't understand what they needed to do. So that's kind of what I want to do is, is, is help to educate them. Brad, before business owners speak with a business broker like yourself, um, do they do you find that they hold maybe a common myth or misconception in their mind about the process of selling a business? Or what, is, what would you say is the biggest myth or misconception they hold? Well, they just, they, they are typically looking at it and, they usually overvalue their business. They feel it's worth more than it is. And that's always the case. It's really based on the cash flow of business. Sales is important, but if it's not putting money in the bottom line, then there's no way for us to get it bank financed. And if you want to get out of a business completely, you have to go through bank financing. It's usually, it will usually be like a, it's an SBA loan, or they would do, you know, it's a private equity firm, but the, the, the business has to cash flow with the new owner, that's making a salary of sixty to seventy thousand, and the business has an EBITDA that is is supportive of the of the the value of that business. So it's just always they'll say, "Well, it's it's three times earning or one time sales," and it's it it varies from business to business, industry to industry. And so I, I can run sales comps and show them businesses I've sold in the last five, 10, 15, and twenty years, and what those what those sales comparisons look like in comparison to their business and how we can get it to where they're at, to where it needs to be. 
During this series, I was pretty surprised to hear a statistic like 80% of businesses that go on the market end up going unsold. It, are these folks that try to sell on their own without the help of a broker or are they making some big mistakes? What, what would you say are the big pitfalls or uh, mistakes people make that sabotage their success at selling? Well, sometimes they try to sell it on their own, which can be they're not preparing the business and doing a full, like I do a sometimes a 30 to 60 page confidential business review, which really gives the ins and outs of the whole business. And I have like a hundred, hundred question questionnaire that I send out to my business owners that are getting ready to sell. So we can answer all the questions for a potential buyer. And that's when a lot of the red flags come up and we start noticing things that we need to change in that business. Um, and so when we say 80% aren't sellable, it's usually brokers that aren't experienced and aren't preparing the business to sell. And they, they say, the owner says, well, I want to sell it for, for five, you know, for 500,000. Well, when I do a business valuation, I, I might say the business is worth, you know, four or 500,000 or if it's a, 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 it's a $2 million business and the owner says it's worth 5 million. Well, that's where we come in and say with my expertise and the bankers that I work with and everyone else, we work through what the value is of the business and what we can get, what we can get the deal financed at. And typically if you don't have that experience and don't know what that looks like, then it won't sell. And uh, you know, I turn down business owners every day because they're not showing a profit. And then they're saying, well, or they're showing 50,000 in profit. Well, I want to get 400,000 for my business. Or they're showing, you know, $300,000 in profit and they want, you know, 4 million for the business. The numbers don't jive. So we've got to, help them understand that and either tweak how they're running the business or adjust the price. And so that's why they typically don't sell. Great insight. Brad, uh, what inspired you to get into this field and help business owners transition and sell their businesses? How did you get started? Well, I got started. It's I've been doing this over six years now and I, I um, I've got a finance background. Uh, I've been a business owner for 25 years. I owned a restaurant for 18 years. I owned a another furniture company. So I've, I've owned various, owned a, a couple other restaurants. So I've been in that situation. And when I went to sell it, I didn't have a broker that understood my business and knew how to do it. And I just felt that I felt like I could do it better. So I w went and, and uh, trained and I got my, um, my certified it's business intermediary. Um, designation so and then i just worked on my trade and educating myself and educating business owners on what makes a business sellable and how we prepare it for market so when we get into the due diligence state i do a lot of that stuff up front so when we get the due diligence we got a, a letter of intent and we got a purchase agreement we want that to be a smooth process that financing is already lined up the business is already you know a lot of due diligence has been done up front so we can give it to the, the buyers so they can do their work and the bank can do their work. So it's just, it's all about the preparation. Right on. Before I ask you my last question, Brad, uh, is there anything that regarding selling a business today that I didn't think to ask you that you feel is important to share with business owners? Um, I don't, you know, I, I think it's just, it's just the things that we've talked about, you know, understand their business, understand their industry and, and, and doing the things to get it prepared. And I think there's a lot of things that that we do on the front end to make that that process easy. So I th think you've touched on, on, on most of that information as far as I'm concerned. Terrific. Brad, for business owners listening who would love to speak with you and get your help, maybe help with the valuation or a strategy, how can they find you and connect with you? You can reach me on LinkedIn. Um, and then you can also reach me on my website. It is... Uh, glbainc.com. And then you can reach out to me by my cell phone, which is 330-524-8205. And um, yeah, we can, you can reach out to me, you know, all those different ways. This has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with my audience today. And I uh, wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Yes. It's been appreciated. You know, I really enjoyed our conversation and I think it was uh it, it was awesome. Thank you for your time. That was Brad Ruth, founder of Great Lakes Business Alliance. And this segment's been brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.